Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Curator on the Loose. I'm Matthew Burchette and I'm the Senior Curator at the Museum of Flight and today we are sitting in the museum's newest acquisition, the CH-47 Chinook. And I got to admit, this is really cool. I've never been in a Chinook before and it's it's kind of bigger than I expected, but kind of smaller than I expected. You can kind of see that the uh, cockpit up here is a little bit cramped. It's not as big as I would have thought. Anyway, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Did you know that the CH-47 has been around since 1958? It's true. In 58, Vertol, they came up with their V-107 design. And, and think of it as a kind of a smaller version of the Chinook and they proposed that this would be the Army's next heavy lift helicopter. And the Army went, you know, that's a great idea, but we want something bigger. And so Vertol sold their V-107 design to the Navy and the Marine Corps. And you guys probably remember it as the CH-46, known as the Frog. Well, the Army said, hmm, the Frog's not good enough for us. We want something bigger that can lift a whole lot more. So Vertol came up with their V-114 design, which eventually became the CH-47. Since the CH-47 was a cargo helicopter, it was equipped with some really cool, specific things to its mission. It's got a bunch of doors, but it's got a really big ramp back there, and you could do all sorts of stuff with that. Bring in palletized cargo. You could even bring in a small Jeep like an M151 or a, maybe a really small howitzer. But on top of that, it's got three sling points beneath it. It's got three cargo hooks. That's nuts. The Huey only had one, but this guy has three, which means that you could lift a whole lot of different stuff. And it's equipped with two TH55 turboshaft engines. In the initial models, those things cranked out 2,200 horsepower a piece. As we got a little bit smarter, we put in bigger engines for more load capability. But one of the neat things about this is it's got two sets of blades. It's not like a Huey where it had a main blade and then a vertical tail rotor. No, no, no. This has got two sets of horizontal blades which means you don't have to worry about counter torque, which also means that all that power that's coming from those two engines goes right to lift. That made this a game changer for this helicopter. It's amazing. The first flight of the CH-47 was in 1961 which makes it right to go to Vietnam. And in fact, the 1st Air Cavalry Division took three units of CH-47s with them to Vietnam, and they did an amazing job carrying troops and cargo all across that big country. But one of the neat things that they did was actually lift artillery pieces on top of mountains. They would take a 105 and sling it from one of those three cargo points we talked about, take it up to a mountain, drop it off, and they would put an entire artillery battery up on these really remote mountaintops. And there was literally no way to get up there other than a helicopter. And from there, those artillery units could command an entire battlefield. It was really smart use of this helicopter. But the pilots quickly figured out that working in the mountains they only had about 7,000 pounds worth of cargo, whereas close to the ocean, they could lift up to 8,000 pounds. And that had a lot to do with the humidity in that country. The other thing is, in 1966 in Vietnam, they turned a few of these into gunships and called them the ACH-47. They had two fixed 20 millimeter cannons two rocket pods or gun pods, you could switch them out depending upon what you wanted to do, and up to five 50 caliber machine guns hanging out the back and out the side windows. But on top of that, a little 40 millimeter grenade launcher turret right up here that could be used by the pilot. It was very similar, in fact, identical to what was used on the Huey Hog. Wow, that was an amazing weapon. In fact, one of them had some nose art called Guns A Go-Go, and the name kind of stuck for all of them. Now, 
The CH-47 is really a cargo helicopter, and we already had the Huey Hog gunship, as well as the awesome AH-1G Cobra gunship. So these guys, they turned it back into cargo helicopters because there was a shortage of Chinooks in country, and they really did cargo better than being a gunship. One of the nice things about having contra-rotating rotors is that you don't have to worry about torque. Like I mentioned earlier, there's no anti-torque rotor on this aircraft like there is in a Huey. So let's say you are unloading your cargo and you've backed into a mountain and you'll see pictures of this in Afghanistan where they'll literally back the aircraft into a mountaintop lower the ramp and offload cargo and here's the mountain and here's the helicopter and it just kind of hovers well, with a regular helicopter like say a Huey or maybe a Blackhawk once you unload that stuff it creates changes in the aircraft's weight and it's hard to balance that with a single rotor but when you've got two rotors there's a little set of buttons right down here where just through a thumb, you can change the torque and the power to either set of rotors. So if you offload in the back and your back end wants to get lighter, you can add more power or less power or more torque. It's a game changer for something like this. That's what makes the Siege 47 such a versatile piece of equipment and so cool. In Vietnam is where the Chinook really earned its laurels, but it's also been in other conflicts. In fact, some of our younger watchers probably know it best from Afghanistan and Iraq, and how important the Chinook was on, in getting cargo and troops up to those high Afghani mountains. But did you know that the CH-47 has also played yeoman service in the civilian sector as well? It's true. When the Fukushima nuclear plant melted down, the Japanese Air Force used their CH-47s to drop water on the nuclear reactor to help it stay cool. But taking some lessons from Chernobyl, they lined this entire cargo area in lead sheet to keep their crews safe. And in 2005, with the huge tsunami, CH-47s again, coming in with medical supplies and cargo and taking out all sorts of people that had been hurt and a Kashmiri earthquake. These guys brought in all sorts of supplies. This helicopter has done so many amazing things and we are really proud to have this particular bird in our collection. And now we're gonna talk about this plane's history. One of the cool things about this aircraft is when she was built, 1961. In fact, she was the 13th aircraft off of Boeing CH-47 assembly line. That is really cool. Now, we're not quite sure if she ever served in Vietnam or not, but if any of you CH-47 drivers watching recognize this serial number and know that you flew her, let us know. We would love to hear from you. Okay. Her serial number is 6102409. -oh so if you recognize that serial number, let us know. We would love to hear from you. Now, after 30 years in the Army, this old girl got an upgrade and she went from a CH-47A to a CH-47D and then did three tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. That is amazing. And then, in 2015, she flew with the Washington National Guard with the 168th Support Battalion, helping fight the Okanagan Complex wildfires. That is so cool. Here's another thing that is really rare about this bird. She is one of the only, if maybe not the only, aircraft in the Army to have official nose art. That's right. She has nose art, and her name is My Old Lady. And when you think about how old this aircraft is, she is an old lady, and we are so excited to have her here. This is such a cool aircraft, and I am really excited to be in here. In fact, I might just spend the night. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you watching. If you've got questions or comments, hit us up on Facebook, YouTube, or hit us up at curator at museumofflight.org and we will answer questions if you have them. Also, if you need to buy swag, please make sure to go to the Museum of Flight gift shop. We're online. We've got cool stuff. We even probably got CH-47 stuff. And if you spend 50 bucks, we'll ship it to you for free. Can't beat that.